The following program was made possible thanks to the generous support of our Kickstarter backers. Well, first, Holmes was bored. Then we got fat, bald, and tired. Sup, Holmes? Beware! Your host, Jonathan Ho! Welcome to summer, everyone. It's an amazing summer already. Are Aurelion? Is that how I say it? Yep, that's the way. Close, that is a way. I said it <laughs> before the show started. Uh, that always happens to me. How are you liking summer so far? It's June 7th, I think. Uh, yeah, and it's perfectly fine in Paris right now. Oh, yeah? It's a little Paris. My goodness. The city of love. That is... Uh, people. Kind of. <laughs> I've heard for years, two cities you have to go to, Paris and Tokyo. I've been to Tokyo, not yet Paris. Tell me about Paris. What is it like? Uh, it's small and it's nice because um, you can do everything without a car. So imagine you're spending the whole day seeing friends and making stuff in the city without any car. And that's pretty cool. That's very cool. Uh, and yet, ironically, you made a video game about being in a car being in a, in a cool car, like a future car. Yeah, uh, I, I, will, I will take my, my shrink about it. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know why. Hmm, interesting. Do you actually drive? I actually failed uh, for my car license this very year. Oh, uh, goodness, while, really? Yeah, while I was making the game. And I, I was just coming back from uh, PAX in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, um, the tomorrow morning, I was having the test for the, the, the car license. And I just failed <laughs> because, uh, because I, I have no excuse. I just failed. It's really hard. Uh, people take driving a car for granted. If you've been doing it for a while, you may think you're good. But I bet a lot of people out on the roads now would fail if they had to take the test again. It's actually a pretty hard test. Uh, uh, it's it's very kind of you to say this, but uh, no, it's not that hard, and I just suck at it for now. For now, but I will get my revenge very soon, very soon. <laughs> That's, I'm feeling the excitement. I, I think. It's <laughs> uh, was there any parallel to your ambition to get your driver's license and your ambition to make a game about driving? I don't give a crap about my uh, car license, actually, uh, but the game was very important. If, if I had to spend an hour to learn something about cars or one hour to spend on the game, I obviously spend it on the game. Uh, it, you can see it because I don't have any driver license right now. <laughs> but I got a game on Steam, so I guess, I guess I'm happy with that. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I think uh, one, an ordinary, ordinary-ish event getting a driver's license, getting a game on Steam, extraordinary. And it's on there now, it's fantastic. I'm very happy about this. But it's and not the final version of the game, is it? Or are you still working is on it? It is, it is. Um, and that's a good point. Uh, nobody outside of France knows it's out in its full version right now. Everything uh, keep thinking it's in early access, but mm. it's out for real for a week now. And nobody is. No, because <laughs> I guess I kind of suck at PR stuff. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, though I, I personally, just knowing that it's also coming to consoles, I think that's yep. where I got scrambled a little bit. Which consoles is it coming to again? Uh, Wii U for now, and uh, more platforms are likely. I guess ah. it's the way to say that when it's not signed yet. Uh, mm, likely. Sure. <laughs> Very cool. Huh. And people don't know. I've got to spread the word about the next Penelope. We'll, we'll review it on Destructoid.com, I'm sure. Uh, th this, is, this is the thing. Uh, I'm making the whole game alone. And um, for the early access, I worked with uh, John Paulson, who is a, a very good uh, PR. And he knows really his shit about indie games, because he was the, um, the chief editor uh, over IndieGames.com. Mm. Uh, and right now he has another job, so he can't handle the PR uh, anymore. So I'm trying to do um, the world PR stuff alone, and I'm having some trouble with that. It uh, is hard, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to beg. I don't want to beg for review. And basically, it's if you're doing your PR, if you 
um, if you make your game alone, mm. uh, code, art, music, everything, and if you do your PR, it's not saying, hey, have you heard about this great game? It's, hey, please, do you want to have a look at my game? And it's very different. You don't want something when people um, pronounce, uh, pronounce it this way. You mm. want to have a friend uh, advising you um, or saying, hey, this stuff is good. You don't want to have the, the guy making the game telling, hey, check it out, please, pretty please. It's kind of weird. So I got to think again about this world PR stuff alone thing. Well, no, I, I, I think it's very hard from, from, I've made some stuff. I've never made a video game. I actually did the graphics for a cute little game. Yeah, I heard, I heard you were making pixel art, right? Oh, yeah, here and there. I haven't done it in a long time now. Uh, right. I still enjoy it though. If I ever retire, from, from things that people actually pay me to do. I'll do pixel art just for fun, All right. Uh, but, but it's very hard to talk about your own stuff without sounding cocky and without sounding desperate and without sounding pushy and not putting in too much, but not putting in, it, it, it's an art that, that oftentimes gets taken. Yeah, for and, and when you're making stuff alone, it's uh, all about deciding if you want to um, do some marketing about you or about your game. And that's kind of uh, kind of the same thing when you're alone. And I'm mm. not very comfortable with that. I, I'm very glad people talk about the game and I'm not very comfortable with uh, saying, hey, look at me. So it, uh, yeah, oh, I, I, I got to find something about this. Oh, well, I want to help. I'm excited to help. And there, uh, Thanks. And, uh, what I've noticed, I've, I've offered to help a lot of game developers just for fun on the side and, and not necessarily game developers I know particularly well. I guess we met years ago when you were working yeah. on Hell Yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah, we, we met. It, it was terrible. Um, I was, I, I wasn't, uh, you, you were fantastic as always. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. I don't uh, know. Thank you. But I wasn't speaking a word of English at this time, like a word. So uh, you basically came on the, the SIGA uh, booth mm. and you talk with my partner and I say, oh, this is the guy from Destructoid. I like it. Uh, I like him very much. I want to talk with him. And I, I think I said something like, hi. And that's it. This, this was the, the whole love story between us. Uh, so I'm glad to talk English a bit better now. And uh, I can't wait to talk with you in the two years or three years. It will be much, much better. Your English is, I, I think it's fantastic. It's downright charming, the, the accent, I would say. Uh, so, but yes, I want to help because I like Thanks. to help everybody. I would help everyone if I could. And I also think your game is really neat. So can't help but be a little bit, uh, have some excitement about it that I'd want to share. In your PR, mention Arquito. People love Arquito. They, yeah, they, that, and yeah. It's like a, a breath of fresh air to remember this time before the uh, indie scene uh, blew up with Indie Game the Movie and whatnot. There was this cool little French studio that was clearly doing whatever they wanted. You guys were totally unhinged with Big Bang Mini and and hell yeah, uh, yeah just let we, your imaginations flow. It was, yeah, it was the way we worked at, uh, at Arquido. Uh, we were funding the game at least for 60%. And then after that, we, um, we will see a publisher and this kind of stuff. So um, the, the publisher at, the, at this time had no input on the creative aspect of the game. And uh, I guess uh, uh, this is the thing people liked about Arquido. And uh, right now, I'm trying to do the same and, um, and make the game um, near, a clump, uh, near a complete status before uh, looking for any help because uh, it's making games is it's kind of personal and mm. if it's marketing driven uh, from the start it's not the same thing. Mm, absolutely, yeah. There's the uh, I've been talking about this like every week for some reason. Top down yeah. versus bottom up approach. Top down yeah. is like we know we want money what makes money what do we already know makes money and yeah. how do we like move down and actually fill out the space so that thing has been created this money making thing bottom up is like i've got an idea about racing cars and being a woman named penelope and yep. uh it's top down uh though they do it does look f-zero influenced however when you actually play it it, it reminds me much more of a, a classic 
uh, racing game that you might find on the TurboGrafx-16 or the Nintendo Entertainment yeah. System, which I think uh, those games uh, have a ton of depth and, and also tend to give you like a, a more instant sense of understanding and gratification of your uh, media space. Them, yeah. Yeah, that, I think it was actually, weirdly enough, last week we were talking to the developers of N++ about it. Uh, Sean McGrath was saying, I hate any platformer where the screen scrolls because you can't take a look at your environment real quick and, and get a sense of everything. It's like it's constantly changing the language on you as you're playing. Yep. Uh, I think that it's even more so in racing games when really your field of vision is just kind of like the horizon and kind of some stuff coming at you in a, in a traditional racing game where you're moving forward. A game like yours, it, it, it has a little bit of a platformer feel to it in that you're really uh, taking in all of the environment at once and, and having to, to deal with moment-to-moment -moment problems as they come you're up. Actually, you have to you have to uh, to feature um, a fast crawling and this kind of stuff if you want to have a, a feel of speed in the game. Mm -hmm. And the the fun and tricky part is um, the more the the closer the camera is from the ship, uh, the better the sense of speed is. Mm -hmm. But the less playable it is. And if you zoom out. It's very, very um, pleasant to play, but it's like you're playing with turtles. So you have to you have to mix the the two things, and that's why the game is uh, zooming in and zooming out every time. So uh, some part of the game feels uh, very fast, and other you uh, really can see what's in front, behind you, on the side, and stuff. And um, it. It was the, um, I think it was the, the the trickiest part of the dev process, knowing how to zoom in or zoom out the camera. Huh. Interesting. Did you have that concept from the start that you wanted to zoom in and zoom out the camera dynamically as as the game plays? Ah, it, it is. It, it's in the final game. It worked this way. Um, hmm. Yeah. Uh, basically, if you are approaching a turn, uh, I'm zooming out. And if you're uh, uh, on the straight road, uh, it's it, it zoom in, so you have a sense of speed. Huh. Interesting. Did you know that you always did you always know you wanted to do that, or just that? No, no, no. Ab absolutely not. It's just um, <laughs> when you're making playtests and people just uh, goes nuts uh, because they can't see anything. And the next playtest, they're like, "All right, uh, I like the way uh, I handle the ship, but it's freaking slow." So. You have to make the best of the two worlds, I guess. Sure. It's actually something that I, I like about the uh, more recent 2D Sonic the Hedgehog games. They zoom in sometimes um, yeah. in order to give you like this intensity, and then they'll zoom out so you actually like have a fair shot of knowing what's in your play field so you know what to, to dodge and whatnot. And it doesn't always work, but as a concept, it, it, I love it. It, it. it really works. And to apply it to a racing game, I'm not sure if it's ever quite been done before like that. that I, uh, I, I, think, I think so. If you look at um, the world uh, Neo Geo games, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Neo Drift Out, this kind of stuff, they were, they were at the time pretty proud about the zoom uh, feature of the Neo Geo. So it was basically zooming in and zooming out for nothing every time. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you have, you have this a lot in, uh, in uh, tons of Neo Geo games. Huh, interesting. Neo Geo, often forgotten, unfortunately, but a lot of Really interesting, really beautiful games on that arcade slash home console. Yeah, I love I love it, and every everything with too much colors in it, and moving uh, too fast, and with uh, tons of particles on it. I, I just can't help. I, this isn't my kind of stuff. So uh, Neo Geo oh. in my heart forever, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> that, this is all we're we're forming your PR as we're we're talking uh, to have in your PR email. Neo Geo is in my heart forever. <laughs> zooming in, zooming out, colors, beauty, and I wanted to apply that to a game <laughs> that you made. Is this your first game after Arcado? Yeah. Uh, um, after 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 the the Arcado's closure, uh, we finished a prototype we had called uh, Poof and the Versus Kitty, uh, versus the Cursed Kitty. Sorry, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a uh, it's a 
very small game mixing uh, hardcore platforming and tower defense. Like, um, do you remember the first Mario game uh, you were playing with uh, Mario and Luigi with uh, the pow, uh, power up in the middle of the oh, river? Absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, you you take this, you add tower defense stuff uh, on the top of it, and you make it trouble, <laughs> and and that's it. And we had this prototype made. Uh, it was like 50. 50% done, so uh, we finished this on our spare time, and right after this, I thought, uh, I thought uh, hey, I could try to make a game on my own, so let's do this. Huh, that was 2013, is that right? Ah, uh, yeah, I guess so, maybe 12 or, 12 or 13, yeah, it was uh, two years and a half, something. My goodness, so how have you managed to make ends meet in the process of working on this game so much? Uh, it was just fun, and I like to <laughs> learn stuff. So it, it it was quite easy to be to be honest. Um, I, I worked. I don't need to sleep much. This is something important. Mm. Uh, I don't sleep much, and uh, I don't suffer from the lack of sleep, uh, which is very important when uh, I'm listening to other uh, indie devs uh, working on game for years. Um, I paid a lot of attention to your episode about old boy um, and uh, I was listening to this guy saying I, I, I spent seven years on the game and I don't know when it will be done and I, I was like hypnotized by this episode because uh, I'm a, I'm a old boy, uh, old boy uh, fan uh, obviously like every everyone else here but this is not the way uh, I work. Uh, I really like when the things are done. So, um, so I just started the project, and uh, I very quickly know I will be able to finish it. Um, and uh, I just worked a lot uh, on it. I didn't, it's done, but it wasn't very hard. It's just a lot of time, but uh, you don't need much skills to do this. You just have to be very regular, and mm -hmm. that's it. Okay, you should. <laughs> I can I hear this quite a bit from game. I think again, Sean McGrath last week was saying something like, "I'm not very talented. Uh, I just uh, am willing to to work on something incessantly for two and a half years." I'm like, "That's <laughs> that takes a lot of uh, inherent talent to be able to make anything, uh, regardless of how." I don't I'm, know. That's I'm, how I see it. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, uh, I'm sure you know a lot of people, very, very talented people, starting projects and not finishing any of, uh, of them. Uh, mm. And most of the time, these people are more talented than everyone else. Uh, they're just making awesome stuff, but they never finish anything. So at the end of the day, the only thing that matters to me is finishing stuff so I can improve for the next project. Mm. And um, and. Uh, on my wall at uh, at the office, I always uh, have the um, direct you uh, drawings with the um, hey I started I started a new project I learned so so much oh I could rework part of the game because I learned so much huh. oh I learned so much again and it's like an endless loop. And it's it's a circle, and you you have to get out of this circle the quickest you can, and just do stuff and say now it's finished. And thanks to the early access uh, uh, phase, um, the first version of the game was like, I've done this. What do you what do you guys think about this, and what can be improved? But the improvements were asked by the players, not by me, which makes it um, more relevant, I guess, uh, to me. And you know what's important and what it's, um, what uh, is only from you. I, I want a lot of stuff in my game, like I want nice reflections on, uh, on the ship, this kind of stuff. But no one gives a shit about it. The, the people want, to, uh, want me to rework the controls. This kind of stuff, and they know what's important. So, for this wall, um, let's work again and again and again uh, on the details. I let this wall part to the players, and it's very, very effective. And um, this is how uh, I've been able to have the job done at the end of the day. Huh? 
Interesting. So uh, out of curiosity, were there any demands or requests that the players made of your game that you you dismissed or, or just didn't think were were relevant enough to, to add or did you consider not, all not, of not so much. Um, there is an important part which wasn't planned and I made uh, is uh, it is the multiplayer aspect of the game. You can uh, you can play the game with four people. Uh, it's a, a coach local uh, local multiplayer mode. Um, and at Gamescom the last year, uh, it wasn't planned at all. It was a solo game, and um, uh, because I wanted to make something with uh, with a real story mode and uh, something different from the other racing game. And in most racing game, you don't have an interesting solo mode. It's uh, all about the online stuff, uh, the the time trials, and this kind of stuff. Uh, so when People were asking again and again about the multiplayer part. Um, that was the limit of the. Let's ask to the people what can be better, because uh, I just it just added maybe six months uh, to the to the production of the game. But they were they were right, and uh, basically they were right on everything they told about the game. So um, because I, I, I guess I'm lucky. It's not because people say things. It's true, but. Um, I'm very lucky since the beginning. People say stuff which uh, sounds just right. So uh, it has been included in, in the game for m most of it. Wow, that, that, that's fantastic to have uh, that kind of relationship with your testers, with your audience, where, uh, and, and to be the kind of developer that you are, that you would put an extra six months into a mode that wasn't your uh, initial passion, but sounds like uh, just yeah. like your passion is contagious, uh, your your fans' passions and their requests are contagious, and you'll get excited about doing new things. To it's it's much more much easier uh, for me because I'm alone. I cost nearly nothing compared mm -hmm. to a studio. So when uh, I'm adding six months to the dev, it's just six months of me wanting to do stuff. It's just it's simple as like that. And uh, if I like uh, uh, if I like um, uh, sorry if I'm in need for money, uh, I just can work. Uh, on other stuff, get some money, and that's it. It's very simple when you're alone. It's not, you don't have a business or company problem. It's just, yeah, I need money, so I will just uh, design some uh, flyers or what's not, and oh, money, and it's okay, and you continue, the, you, you, you continue. And for the, for the last three months of the day, um, my distributor uh, gave me some money to finish without the need to work um, uh, on the side, and uh, and that's it. Amazing, so you make life sound, I want to live like like you, uh, where I'll just, right. I need some money, I'll just make some flyers, and then I will get paid, and then I will continue to, Work on yeah. my uh, my amazing. That, that's, the, that's the whole point. If you if you having a one man company, mm. it's just as simple as that. Uh, you need you need to pay the bills. You need to pay for um, the, your rent or, or or something. It it's not like you have to sign contracts mm. uh, or, or or making awesome deals or this kind of stuff. You just uh, two months of the productions have just been uh, funded by me reselling my games and uh, retro consoles and this kind of stuff. Um, it's much, much simpler. So uh, after the Arcade years and seeing how hard is it to have a studio running and, and the whole money stuff, money is very important. But when you are alone, not that much. Huh. Uh, it's just that. To, to finalize my point, most of us aren't so good at making flyers that we can just make some flyers and people will pay us for them. I make flyers all the time. Nobody pays <laughs> me for them. They, they don't think they're that good. Your flyers must be quite nice. Uh, this was my previous job Bef before working in video games. Uh, I was working in ad uh, ads company, mm. and I was making uh, uh, logo flyers, these uh, websites, this kind of stuff. And um, I, I don't like to do this very much, but it pays okay. So when uh, when I get opportunities to do this, I just grab the money and put it in the game. <laughs> so great. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up. 
so you started off in advertising. Was that right after college? Did you go to college for art or design? No, no not, that, not that much of college. Um, just uh, drawing schools, basically. And, um, and I started to work uh, very early on... Uh, it was the very beginning of the, the world internet thing. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm, 30, uh, I'm 35 years uh, old right now. So um, I was there for the very first uh, commercial website and this kind of stuff and uh, the Netscape era and uh, <laughs> uh, so I designed uh, I designed website and, and uh, flyers and this kind of stuff at this at this era and uh, after that I was uh, making uh, flash cartoons then flash games then games for mobiles uh, way before the iPhone and then games for Nintendo DS, but it was a long way to come to video games. Wow! So, what were your early Flash games like? Uh, crappy. <laughs> were they, uh, and I assume you worked on them by yourself. So, uh, the yeah, it was artwork. Yeah, yeah, it was it was small two D games uh, from uh, for um, uh, brands like Nokia or uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, it was the um, I remember making something with Santa and Matrix effects uh, in it because yeah, it was the year two thousand, so Matrix all over the place, and uh, no, it was terrible really. Uh, but uh, but it, I, I felt lucky at this time because I was working on on stuff uh, I kind of like for money, but uh, the, the whole plan for the beginning was to end making video games. So mm. <clears throat> first, uh, first uh, website, then uh, um, uh, how to say it, comics, uh, comics books for children, mm. uh, then uh, ads, banners, this kind of stuff, then flash games, then mobile games, then at last Nintendo, Nintendo DS games. Uh, and what was your first Nintendo DS game? It was uh, a game called Nervous Breakdown. Uh, it's uh, a bit popular in here, uh, but uh, I think in the US it's very unknown. Uh, it was, um, oh, how do you say this in English? Uh, the, the breakout, yeah, it was a yeah. breakout clone, uh, but with tons of weird ideas in it, uh, changing the gameplay, the graphics, the, 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 the sounds, uh, like a WarioWare uh, style of game. And at the end of the game, you were uh, playing three different games uh, at the same time, uh, a platformer, a breakout, uh, a shoot them up, this kind of stuff. And um, it had uh, a small success in there, making us able to uh, found the next one, which was uh, Big Bang Mini. And Big Mom Mini is uh, a more known uh, in the US and less in Europe. And it's uh, basically a manic shooter like the, um, the cave one, uh, but with fireworks and no spaceships. So it's kind of weird, I guess. And if I remember correctly, skeletons, uh, all sorts yep. of, of fun enemies that you, you fight. Very hearkening back to the Parodius uh, kind of lighthearted, and this was at a time when there were so many uh, gritty, serious uh, video games were, and I, I think video games are starting to come out of this now, I, I hope, uh, but they, they really seemed like they had a lot as a, as a medium that they wanted to prove in terms yeah. of how grown up and, and adult and, yeah. and, and harsh they could be. And then Big Bang Mini! <laughs> like, come on guys, fireworks, skeletons, let's have a good time! And people really... I, I, I wish... I wish I was grown up and, and I was saying very meaningful stuff like other, other people you had in the show. But uh, yeah, really, I just want blue skies, colors, and uh, arcade stuff. And uh, that's, that's what I like. And I, I, I love this very deeply. It's not something I can just uh, toss away and say, I will do something very smart for very meaningful for intelligent people. I just want people playing the game and say, whoa, that's nice, I'm having fun. That's, and it really is. Um, every year I got dejected. Um, very different with uh, erotic stuff in, the, in there, uh, um, um, very dark thing. And each year I start this kind of project and each year after a few weeks, it's just not what I want to release. It's something, uh, this kind of game, I, I like to make it for me, but I don't want to release it because it's uh, too personal or too, 
uh, I don't know, to, to uh, experimental. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the kind of games uh, I like to work for many months or many years, this, it's this kind of stuff, the uh, arcade-ish and blue sky and particles and what's not. Huh, interesting. Uh, do you think that might be because you don't get re-sustained by making something overly personal, or I think you said erotic or, or dark? Yep. Um, it, it, those kinds of projects for, for some people are very uh, emotionally self-sustaining. They work on it, they put energy yeah. into it, and then they get energy back from just looking at what they did, and then they put more energy out. Whereas from the sound of it, when you make something with colors and, and a beautiful sky and, and particles and speed and excitement and simple arcade, you get energy back from that, like, and you get excited yeah. about that, and then you can put and, energy back into the game. Yeah, and... Um, uh, now that I'm making games alone, um, this is very important for me to be uh, in a positive mood uh, day after day. And uh, working on stuff, uh, on depressing stuff, I'm not sure I could handle it, to be honest. Uh, even making uh, a fun game like uh, Penelope, even if it has a story and all, but uh, making just a fun game uh, like this, you're very, very into it. You, it's, it's like you're thinking about your game every fucking second. Uh, when you're with friends, you, you're thinking about to-do list. And when you, you're with your wife, you're thinking about to-do list. Um, and uh, I prefer thinking about, oh, too hard, particles, blue sky, explosion. Nice, fun. Then thinking about to add uh, creepy monsters making sex with depressed people, asking uh, themselves what they do for a living. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm being yeah. honest right now. No, I, of course, I, I embrace it. I'm so happy that you that you are. I've uh, the, the guys who made. Um, Gods will be watching. They told me they got pretty depressed while making that game. It's very depressing. I, I, I definitely can guess it. Uh, I love this game, by the way. I, I, oh. This is exactly the kind of game I like to play. The Gods will be watching. And uh, I met uh, Alexander Bruce uh, two times. The the guy making um, Anti Chamber. And we were uh, we talked uh, a bit about uh, being alone on your game and not being uh, insane about it. And uh, he had uh, very, very good advices. And um, he was making a very cerebral game, uh, um, an intelligent game, kind of. Uh, mm. not, not kind of, a very intelligent game. And, um, and yeah, he, he was very into it for many years alone. And uh, I, I cannot imagine how hard it is to, um, yeah, to live in your game, if your game is uh, all about uh, black and white stuff, uh, uh, um, enigm uh, uh, how to say it? enigmas, no. Um, if your game is about problem to solve, uh, mm -hmm. it must be very hard to, uh, to be into it for, for, for many years. So I'm glad to making just uh, racing, shooting games and this kind of stuff. And this is, for the for the 15 years old me, uh, also, um, I, I spend so much time uh, on this on these games, and um, I fall asleep. Uh, I fall asleep so much, the the, the nose and the, uh, uh, like this on the screen with pixels so close from my eyes. Um, when I was uh, very very young, uh, um, I used to uh, be asleep on the cocktail arcade cabinets. I, I don't know if you, you you know the cocktail one. Oh yeah, uh, sure. The, the it's larger. like tables and yeah. yeah. And every time in the early days, I, I was falling asleep on this and and seeing the games like uh, Pengo or Kicker or uh, very very close. And it's just a part of me now, and I'm just super happy to make this kind of stuff. That's great. Yeah, we we, we definitely share that. I don't know if I ever saw a cocktail of Pengo, Pengu, Pengo, 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 uh, uh, brick. Yeah. Like green jerks with like drills. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. yeah, and this awful music called popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Is that how it went? No. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you want to play the game, but you want the music to stop. <laughs> My mom friggin' loved Pengu. 
and uh, Penny. She had good I mean, taste. And, and uh, 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 Super Breakout, which influenced you, I'm guessing, in making Nervous Breakdown. Not Nervous Breakdown, yeah. Nervous Breakdown. I've kind of tracked that down. Yeah. I had no idea that it ends with you playing a platformer and a, and a breakout style game and a shooter. The real, the real ending of the game is you fighting the last brick, because when you're uh, playing a breakout game, the most annoying stuff is to get the last brick when the the world level is is it, it, it drives you crazy and it's no fun at all so um we use the the uh, blowing uh, feature of the nintendo ds so you can uh curb the um, the ball and and reach the the last brick very efficiently but for the the very last boss uh it was just one brick saying I'm the last brick. Uh, I'm, I'm the last brick, and uh, fuck you. And uh, and it was like a western setting with the brick, like this. And uh, and it was yeah, the, the last brick annoying you. <laughs> was that uh, Arquito? You had such a, 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 a like a white hot sense of humor. It it was uh, uh, knowingly ridiculous, kind of self. Parody at times, but also just so full of imagination, uh, so out of left field a lot of the time. Did that come from the chemistry within the company? Did you two make each other laugh, or uh, it wasn't? I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. It, it was. It was um, until earlier. It was just basically having fun making games and not thinking much about it. Uh, so I guess the the, the light hearted. Um, uh, way we made the game, uh, you can feel it when playing the games. Um, and starting earlier was the the same thing, but finishing earlier was more about serious stuff with uh, Sega and all. So that's why we try to uh, make another game after this, uh, the the one I was mention mentioning uh, earlier. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm oh. getting. Can I can I drink something for a very? Oh yeah, time? absolutely. Yeah. Drink all you'd like. I speak so much. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Uh, um, yeah, we wanted to uh, to make smaller games after Elie, but uh, it was very difficult to get money from that. Uh, so that's why uh, Poof uh, were the last one, and this is why uh, I'm making games alone right now. It to to have the the freedom to make small games, but polished one um, games maybe maybe a bit short but uh, with nothing uh, useless in it I'm trying very hard to do this I, I don't know if I succeeded uh, in it but that's really what I'm trying uh, to do that's a, that's an amazing pursuit and one that's getting more and more rewarded uh, at least in the in what I've seen lately trends in gaming there used to be a lot of reward for bloat and just throwing everything you possibly could into a game in order to impress with pure girth and pure breadth and now people are saying I have 500 games in my backlog yeah I don't want to sit through any uh, dead space or, or I don't want any fat in this just give me like six hours of pure fun and then I can move on to the next game. The, these this are the is, kind of games this is, that are rewarded more. This is what, what I like as a, uh, as a gamer, but I guess it's because we are kind of old. Um, the, the, maybe, maybe you're not, but I, I feel oh, I'm a bit. Yeah. Um, uh, students and, and uh, young people, they have time. They mm -hmm. can play. Uh, very long games, and when you're uh, releasing a short game, uh, it's like, where is my money? Because mm -hmm. it, it, it's only four or five uh, hours long, and you're, you're like, but it's not very expensive. This is this is why the price is small. But they don't care about it because, um, yeah, they have some time. And when you're about the 30 years, uh, you want the opposite, the absolutely the absolute opposite. You want to play a game from start to finish and most of the time you can't because you have uh, a life mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> not saying the, the young ones don't have a life but uh, a different life well, let's, let's I can see it this way <laughs> yeah very well said when I was younger I often uh, I had time and I didn't know how to fill it and I didn't want to be bored and I wasn't good at any of the things I wanted to do yet so doing anything that, that uh, involved practice and work and stress 
it was difficult. And, and also, I probably needed escapism a little bit more because you have much less control over your life when you're 13 yeah. or 14. You're forced to do uh, this and that, and there's all these things you're not allowed to do. So to get to play a video game and enter this world where you can control what happens and, and be uh, an adult, be important, be whatever, these kinds of games, sure, the, these big open world games where you're very empowered all the time, has a different appeal for a 13 year old than, than us. We, we have a lot of power over our lives. We also have tons of responsibility to just yeah. narrow it down and be like, I don't have a lot of responsibilities right now. I'm just racing this car and shooting those guys. Yeah. And I'm just <laughs> for a few hours and get some relief from the, the overarching burden of just being an adult. Uh, it's a different kind of escapism, I guess. Yeah, that's the. That's very, very well uh, summed up. Uh, I have nothing to add to this. It's just exactly what, I, what I'm thinking. Well, uh, something I was thinking before, because uh, I uh, can't help but be very interested in the, the more personal dark games that you have in you, but it's sounding like there isn't an emotional cycle where the, you're ever going to keep pushing with those kinds of games, at least right now, because the kind of game you'll work on for two and a half years is one that is like bright and exciting as opposed to something dark and kind of painful. Uh, and then I wanted to, to recant that. I've heard this many times. Uh, the I guess so, yeah. Yeah, the, the developers, they're now called uh, Choice Provisions. They were called Gaijin Games. The, the first right. game in their BitTrip series is called BitTrip Fate. And the, they said they were like morbidly depressed making it. But there was three of them on the team so they could like reinvigorate them each other Whereas if it was just them alone, same with uh, Zoe Quinn and Patrick Lindsay who worked on Depression Quest, they were, you know, pretty depressed when they were making that and it was depressing to make it, but they would try to motivate each other or else it would never happen. Uh, the only developer I can think of offhand who made like a dark, depressing game by himself, uh, Edmund McMillan recently, not that recently now, I guess, made Binding of Isaac, but he yeah. just pushed through that in three months, and he was just telling me, like, if I spent more than three months on that, I would have got bogged down and, and like, grossed out and freaked out, but I just, like, in a, in a blaze of inspiration, yeah, I just kept making the art, and, yeah. In a, in a way, uh, the Binding of Isaac is about fighting the depression. Mm. Uh, you're basically exploding the depression, so I guess it can be kind of a therapy, Mm. And uh, I, I don't want to speak for Edmund Macmillan, but um, uh, I see this. I, I love the game, and I, I played. Uh, I played it a lot. And um, but you're a part of this thing, and you're fighting the depression. You're fighting the 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 mom and the the war stuff. It's not just uh, telling, hey, this thing happened and made made me sad, and I will tell you the story. It's Let's um, let's have a have a gun with my eyes and uh, and just uh, throw tears on stuff and make it explode. And um, it's very more active and more efficient. In it's not like uh, speaking again and again about yourself and trying to sell a game to people um, and explaining uh, how bad you feel about stuff. It's is different, so um, um, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't say the Binding of Isaac uh, feels like a depressing game to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. It, like you said, you're fighting the depression. You're fighting being oppressed by your 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 own mother. Spoilers: yeah. Binding of Isaac. <laughs> I haven't played it yet. I think it came out like 2012. But yeah, so that's part of the game. Uh, you are sad and vulnerable and depressed in the game. But you're fighting back. You're active. Yeah. It's a fun juxtaposition. And you're taking drugs, which is a very good way to fight the depression. <laughs> this is a, a solid point, yeah. And yeah. Uh, Edmund was just talking about, uh, with me anyway, how he didn't blame Nintendo at first for, for not putting the game on the Nintendo 3DS because he's like, well, yeah, the, there's drug use and you kill your mom in it and you're a yeah. naked baby, so fair enough. Whereas I was like incensed, like they can't stop you from putting your game on the 3DS, <laughs> it's important, blah, blah, blah. He just thought I was being a little bit... Silly. Uh, um, uh, yeah. publishers, publishers and uh, and um, console uh, brands don't uh, don't own you anything. Is they mm. have the right to say no to something? I, I just been uh, refused by GOG uh, for the next Penelope. I don't know why, but it's their choice. If they don't like the game, it's okay. You have to play by the rules on this kind of stuff. Is 
these are private companies and if they for a reason don't like what you do or if they think it doesn't fit with uh, what they're trying to sell you just have to say it's okay um or you accept to be like um, a kind of a diva and make some marketing about this kind of stuff. I I, I don't want to uh, scream, oh, you gog bad guys, I hate you so much. Um, the, my only reaction has been, hey, I'm glad Gog uh, is making a selection. It's better for the store to select the games they accept because um, it will end with better games and less crappy shovelware games. So, um, yeah, you have, you have to be okay with that in a way because they are private companies. They don't own you anything. Oh, yeah. you, sorry. sorry. Oh, no, sorry. no, I, I, I definitely understood. That is for uh, the humble, uh, well-meaning, creative, wanting to be constructive game developer perspective. As uh, someone who writes about video games and, and plays them whenever I have the chance, I get really mad when stores say, <laughs> I am not going to allow this game to exist on this console at all. With GOG, it's a little different because they, they don't kind of own the storefront for all computers. But with yeah. Nintendo, if you aren't allowed to put your game on the, the eShop and if it's not a, a big game or you don't have the, the capacity to put it out in retail, which is this whole other thing, if it's a very particular kind of game that can only exist on their uh, downloadable service, and they say no for, for arbitrary reasons, they've effectively silenced that game from being able to exist for, for millions of people. And I was beer, 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 all mad about it. And then, but <laughs> I think it's a bit of a thing. It was I, very I, intense. Uh, <laughs> I do, I, I'm aware of how maybe silly it is that I do get mad about this stuff because it's yeah. not worth getting uh, That's hostile or destructive about, but I still, uh, I feel like defending the, these games I care about. And, and, and I'm glad you're doing this, but um, when you're, when you want your game to be out on consoles, you have to fill documents saying, um, we are presenting you our concept and maybe there will be an approval. You know it worked like this. It always worked this way. Um, and now with uh, Greenlight, Steam, the, uh, um, the whole indie scene on PC, it, everyone is thinking, I just made a game and everyone can buy it. Because that's true on PC. But uh, for consoles, yeah, there are process. And um, this is what people pay for. Mm -hmm. They buy a console to have only good enough games and with a selection process and um, I personally can't be mad about uh, about this. I'm glad Nintendo says no so much uh, to people uh, trying to bring bad games on their consoles and um, and I say this because they said yes for the next Penelope but um, so their curation process for quality uh, yeah. I, I am behind that. In fact, I think they've gotten a little lax on it for the Wii U, not yeah. to, to mention the next Penelope in that sentence, because next Penelope no, you can, you can. <laughs> no, it's a very good game. Uh, but they, they've let some games on that uh, are, are clearly, uh, some of these games take like literally 45 seconds to a minute to beat, yeah. and it costs you dollars, and, and they're not like... Uh, there's nothing to them. They're, they've been really lax in that, and they've been lax in general, which is, is interesting to see them do less in the way of curation. It sounds like you are for Steam, GOG, and whatnot, being in part curators to, to what games uh, we end up being exposed to. Yeah, I, w I would prefer the... Uh, I, w I was preferring the, the old Steam without, uh, without green light on it, uh, mm -hmm. when there were um, actually real people saying yes or no for a game to be out. Um, we all agree right now, it's easy to say this now and not two years ago, but mm -hmm. we all agree there are too many games and nobody can't have a game, a small game can stand out uh, on the on the front page right now. Mm -hmm. uh, just too many games. And um, the way you could make money two years ago or maybe one year ago was um, with the sales. But right now, so many thousands of games are on sales at the same time. 
then you have the same problem when it's not the sales. So um, too much games, and how how can we how can we reach people this way? Mm. Um, and if they come back at some point, I don't think they will. But if they come back at some point to um, a process where a team is saying, yeah, I like this game. It's uh, allowed to be released on Steam. And I don't like this game. It's like um, having a, yeah, an, a magazine saying, this is good enough, this is not good enough. And this is why GOG making this process is not pissing me at all, even if they refuse the next Penelope. I think uh, on the long term, it's better for the world uh, video game market to uh, have a selection of products and not just every game on earth available and not being able to be discovered. Yeah, I, I, I could definitely see that. Uh, there's something to be said, pros and cons for everything. Uh, heavy curation versus just setting everything free yeah. and, and, and making everything available to everybody. Uh, definitely good and, and bad about all of it. Uh, excited to see how your game's going to do on the Wii U, as it is just the kind of game I think a lot of people with the console want. The Wii U had a, a, something of a stigma about it for a while. There was seemed like a, a, a news story or an editorial almost every day about Nintendo's doomed and the Wii U, so depressing. Uh, <laughs> but lately, ever since Smash Brothers, or maybe, maybe even starting with Mario Kart, which is a very fitting game to have a pre-install base for for your game. Your yeah. game is different from Mario Kart, but similar in that it is a racer, but it also has a, a actual physical combat. Yeah. We don't, we don't, we are not playing in the same court. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely not. Well, I, I would say they, they may appeal to the same audience who want a lighthearted, fun, Maybe. focused racing game, and Maybe. and uh, across the board. And then Smash Brothers, your game isn't doesn't have a ton in common with Smash Brothers, but there is local. Uh, multiplayer and it's competitive. Uh, and now with Splatoon, has just come out. Actually, I don't know if you played Splatoon. It has a racing game in it that has a touch right. of the next Penelope uh, in it in terms of it being a top-down racer. With uh, ah, I did I did not knew uh, I did not, uh, I did not know that. Um, sadly, I didn't had time to play much games lately. Uh, yeah, with the uh, Splatoon has a racing game. All right, I, I will. Check this out. Check this out. All right. It's a little game you can only unlock with Amiibo. I wonder if I have uh, Amiibo around. I know Amiibo. You unlock the racing game by beating this guy's challenges. All right. Nintendo sent me, which is easy for me. Maybe I can get one for you. Maybe <laughs> that'll be fun. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah. How do you feel about moving forward with the, the with the Wii U audience? How do you think that might go? Um, since the very beginning of the project, uh, the Wii U audience is the more um, uh, enthusiast and reactive about the game, and uh, so I'm I'm trying to not just say thing from um, uh, uh, how to say it. Um, I was uh, uh, I was this close to just throw bullshit marketing bullshit. So uh, I, I'm just stopping right now and thinking about. Assuming what, what I'm saying, um, mm -hmm. no. For, for the start, uh, the Wii U audience have been super, super supportive. Even, even when nobody, uh, no other people on Earth, uh, cared about the game. So uh, yeah, I, I can't wait for the for Penelope to be released on Wii U, and especially because now I'm working with another company. Um, and uh, this company made uh, ports for super, super high quality games. And they're based in, uh, in Barcelona. They made uh, the ports for uh, Fez, Spelunky, uh, Jet Set Radio, this kind of, this kind of games. Wow. And uh, yeah, I, I, needed, uh, I needed some help on the Wii U version because the, um, I wasn't able to make it run smoothly, en uh, smoothly enough. So now I got help and um, and yeah, I, I, I'm really, really impatient to, to see this on the Wii U because um, the multiplayer mode on PC, everyone was ask me, asking me to have multiplayer, but people don't play it that much because you don't play with four people um, uh, uh, on the couch with, with the PC. Even if you can play the next Penelope with four, four players on the same keyboard. So you have no excuse, but still people 
we're asking for it and don't play it. Mm. On the Wii U, I think it will be the exact opposite. Uh, I think the solo mode will be quickly played and the multiplayer uh, will be played again and again. So um, I'm very curious about this and uh, I, I want to see let's play uh, multiplayer let's play uh, on the game. Really. Oh. Maybe you can share a little bit more with us the difference between the, the single player and the multiplayer aspects of it because again similar to Splatoon I'm realizing as I'm saying it, Splatoon has a dedicated single player which uh, has a little story and has a, uh, some different mechanics, a lot of different environmental mechanics, uh, and you really learn how to play the game there, and then you can take those skills to multiplayer and actually, actually, be much better. Actually, in the next Penelope, um, the, the two modes doesn't share any code. Um, really? The, yeah, the, so, the solo part of the game, uh, the, ob obviously this is kind of the same way to play the game, but not as exactly. Uh, the solo part is made, uh, it's all about uh, the story, the weapon, and this mechanic when you're losing energy when uh, using the weapons. And to, uh, so there is a, a lot of tension and this kind of stuff in the game. And the multiplayer is more about having uh, very, very, very fast uh, and short matches of like 10 seconds and do another one. So um, it's uh, it's more cl uh, it's closer than Mashed. I don't know if you do. You know a game called Mashed? I'm not sure. Uh, can you tell uh, me more about it? Uh, it was a four-player game with cars on uh, PS2 and Xbox One and Xbox. Sorry, not Xbox One. The first Xbox. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> tricky name. Uh, and I think it's available on Steam for something like a dollar and yes I'm basically telling you to buy this game instead of mine for a dollar but um <laughs> they can buy they can afford both I'm sure mash oh mash. spend that money uh <laughs> but uh yeah it's super cool mash is very very cool and you have to try it it's ugly Vi visually it's ugly but it's super super fun and uh, this is what uh, um, I try to do with the multiplayer part because I didn't want um the owner of the game to have an advantage over the other players so mm -hmm. the rules are kind of different and uh, it's very made uh, to have super short um, super short matches and do uh, 50 matches uh, 50 games and not one game um, uh, lasting like 10 minutes it's just it's like 10 seconds you win 10 seconds I win 10 seconds and so um, yeah you have to give it a try if you can huh it, it almost sounds like uh, I don't know if you played Dive Kick, but uh, Adam Hart yeah. and yeah, and, uh, and I'm a huge fan of uh, Knee Dog as well. Uh -huh. So um, I was more thinking about uh, Knee Dog and uh, and Dive Kick and this kind of game more than about the real Micro Machine uh, Micro Machine one. <laughs> I had not thought of Micro Machines at all, but those are cool too. Uh, so yeah. you, you in and out, is it really ten seconds a multiplayer race in the next Penelope? Um, it, it works with uh, with points, like in uh, Micro Machine. But um, if uh, if you uh, how to say it, if it lasts more than ten seconds, the walls begin to crush the, the the players, and it's done. You have the points, and next round. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's only ten seconds because I made walls to crush you if it lasts more than this. <laughs> that keeps the sense of urgency, excitement. Yeah. And regardless of whether you're going to win or not, nobody wants to die. Like there's there's a strange yeah. thing about video games. Uh, even when you know you're going to lose, you still have self-preservation. At least at least I do, and I think a lot of people do. So that keeps you involved and entertained, regardless yeah, and, of whether you're going to win or not. The thing I don't like in uh, in games like uh, Super Bomberman, uh, I, I love Super Bomberman, but uh, it's when you're half dead, mm -hmm. when you when you lose the round but you're uh, on the side uh, of the arena and you can throw bombs or being a, a bit annoying with the others, but you're not really playing. So um, I, I wanted at all costs to avoid this uh, this thing mm -hmm. and make sure um, you only have to wait for five or six seconds uh, max and then be back in the game. Right. How did, did you put any safeguards in place that if one player is clearly uh, uh, better than the others. I don't know if there's any handicap involved because uh, as exciting as multiplayer sounds, and I, I love a lot of the design ideas you have in there, I'm already worried I'll play against someone who's way better than me and they'll just beat me like a hundred times in a row. Yeah, but if you're, if, you're, if you're playing 
with some friends and someone is way better than the others, you know exactly what will happen. You and your friends, uh, let's, let's, let's call it the weak team. Uh -huh. uh, you will be together, kill the first one, then race each other. Uh -huh. you, you, and uh, this, is, uh, this is a very effective way to, uh, to fix this problem. Uh -huh. And people do this very uh, in a natural way. If someone is, uh, is too strong, everyone uh, make a team uh, and fight him uh, in the first place and then race between each other. Right. So for, for people who haven't played it yet or haven't seen, how much is it racing versus how much is it combat? Would you say it's 50-50? Would you say it's 60-40? Uh, uh, maybe, yeah, 50-50 yeah, really. Um, not the solo part. The, so, the, the solo part has a very, very different um, gameplay ideas in the levels and sometimes it's all about shooting and sometimes it's uh, all about racing. But the multiplayer part is really 50-50. It's like rock and roll racing or this kind of games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and tell us about the single player. It has a, a narrative focused on the character Penelope, is that right? Yeah, um, you're playing as Penelope and uh, it's based very in a, in a very free way uh, on the Odyssey, and um, you're looking for Ulysses, and um, and uh, you will explore uh, different planets in any order, and on each planet you will get a weapon, and this weapon you will keep it for the other world. So you can think about uh, Mega Man or this kind of games. Uh, so um, there is a bit of, of strategy uh, in the order. You will get the weapons and you will um, you will meet the, the famous characters like the Minotaur, the Sirens, and this kind of stuff. And um, the, the, the credit for the, the idea about uh, having the mythology in a futuristic uh, setting is, uh, is, it's not me, it's a, a cartoon. Uh, we were watching a lot in France when we were kids called Ulysses 31. Mm -hmm. And um, figure uh, disco music, um, Cyclops, spaceship. Wow. This is your marketing e email again. D uh, you know, start a uh, start email. Just one line. Disco music. Next line. Cyclops. <laughs> spaceship. This is a video <laughs> game you could be playing. And you know. uh, there, there is some disco music in the game. Actually, the the final boss have a disco music. So um, uh, it's I've, I've, coming back. People are hungry again uh, uh, for color, for excitement, for levity for for a, a concentrated but explosive experience and this I, I guess i guess we need uh, we need something a bit uh, lighter for uh, yeah for a few months now because every yeah it, it, it i'm just throwing stuff like this but yeah um it's okay. The world, a the world is sick and we need happiness you know yeah um, no <laughs> i agree 100% everyone i talk yeah. to period they say, I watch the news and there's another yeah. mass shooting or there's a war or there's, you know, the people being killed by our own police here in the United States or, uh, you know, uh, people feel like uh, I'm hearing more and more from people in other countries that they feel like American culture is trying to take over the world. There's like this American imperialism I'm hearing about, like for the past month, like you Americans are trying to make everyone else's culture like yours. And there's all this hostility and anger. And of course, in the video game community, there's ongoing, I hate yeah. all game journalists or all, I hate all this and that. And uh, to have a game that is just pure lightness and fun, uh, I think people are more and more hungry for it right now. I think it feels that way. I, I hope so. And uh, from what I see right now, um, this the thing making me super happy uh, and really, really deeply happy. Uh, the next Penelope is the first game I've been uh, so much positive reviews on Steam, something, uh, and um, this is the very first time I'm making a game with uh, such a positive feedback on it. So um, yeah, I guess people want a bit of colors and a, uh, a bit of fun right now, and it makes me super glad. <laughs> <laughs> and and you wrote the story for it as well, and did the the yeah. character design, the two dimensional artwork, you did the yeah, ship uh, design, everything. everything. My goodness. Yeah, yeah, every, Everything. Um, the, the story of the game is kind of basic. Uh, I, I tried very hard to not um, 
produce a, a bland story, but uh, at the end of the day, knowing uh, most people will, uh, will skip it because they just want to shoot and race, you can't, uh, yeah, you can't very uh, write classic literature thing and very deep thing, but I really tried hard to not making something stupid. So hopefully people will notice it, maybe. Hopefully, I, I bet that they will. Uh, and people have a, a appreciation for the show don't tell as opposed to going on and on with, with narrative and, and uh, dialogue to just say, these are your characters. You can tell just from looking at them, the feelings that you get. Penelope, for, from, for me, when I look at her, I see an, an internal strength, but a vulnerability and kind of an internal conflict, kind of a, a, a pained, uh, concern that she has, uh, and yet she's willing to, to literally drive forward despite having that uh, internal conflict and 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 questioning. Uh, uh, and, and in the going anyway. In the in the game, uh, pen, um, in the original book, uh, Penelope is basically doing nothing and just wait for Ulysses to come back. Um, and in the game, she is forced to move and do something so his, uh, her realm is not destroyed. So you will see her um, becoming a true heroine um, slowly. Uh, and uh, this is something I wanted to, to do. And uh, I'm very glad because nobody is asking me, uh, why is this the uh, why is your character a woman? Uh, why does she miss her, her arm? Uh, an arm, sorry. Um, and it's just normal. And I think we are making quite a, some progress uh, here because um, yeah, nobody is asking why, and it makes me super comfortable. <laughs> Did you see the uh, the new Mag Mad Max movie? Not yet. Um, I, I, I wish I had heard. time There's to. A... Yeah, everyone is telling me this is dope, man. Go see the Mad Max movie. <laughs> you have to see it. And uh, hopefully, I will have some, a bit of time this week. Uh, well, the, the reason I asked is the course. main character is not actually uh, Max. It's a, a woman. Don't tell me this kind of thing. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I won't give away too much. I won't give away the, the plot. But there's a woman. She's yep. missing an arm. And she is very good at driving. And uh, uh -huh. she also is, is uh, not looking for Ulysses exactly, but she's trying to get back to something that she has lost and is trying uh -huh. to, to, to defy kind of the powers that be in a way. So there's interesting parallels there uh, right off the, the, the bat. No, I really have to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope, you, I hope you do. I hope you like it. It, it, it harkens back, again, similar to your game in a way, it, uh, the Mad Max Fury Road. It's made by George Miller, who made the 80s Mad Max movies. Mm. And he has not changed his style. He has uh, better equipment and, and more know-how, but it's still... And no, more, and no more Tina Turner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, no more Tina Turner. But it, it's almost as uh, kind of uh, flamboyant as... Thunderdome. Some of the characters are very over the top. There's the businessman who has cut holes just for his nipples mm. in his suit. He's got a very nice business suit on, except for the <laughs> nipple holes he cut. And then he has a chain going between the nipples. Never explained. And he's just driving around in a car, just being like, oh, let's kill these guys. Uh, so <laughs> Wait, no, this is Mad Max. I guess you have to accept a lot of things when, you, when, uh, when you're seeing Mad Max. And uh, yeah, I'm. I want to see strange nippers right now. I, I will, I will see it. <laughs> I hope that you do. And I, show I me the nippers. <laughs> and I love to hear hear what you think about it uh, when you do. So, so at Arquito, you didn't do the coding as well, did you? Absolutely you were, not. No, your art and design at Arquito. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. So I was. was, I was like, like, yeah. No, no, no. Please continue. I was just going to ask uh, what it was like to have to pick up the programming side of things after. Uh, it's, uh, it was super easy because of the tools I'm using. I'm using tools, uh, and for the music, this is the same thing. Uh, I'm using tools for dummies, uh, um, like uh, Game Maker or Construct2. And, um, and again, this is uh, just about the time you're investing uh, in, in this. It's not hard, it's, it's just a long process, but it's 
very not hard. And um, uh, with Game Maker, Construct2, Unity, lately, if you're a graphic artist or a musician or a journalist, uh, any, anyone with uh, a strong motivation, you can produce a game. This is not a, a matter of uh, knowing how to code or, or, or something. The, the real coders will always uh, be stronger and um, and will always uh, bring more uh, possibilities and features to the game. But if you know your game is all about um, ideas and not technical features, you really can jump in, <clears throat> jump in and and try to do um, yeah your own game even without coding. Wow. This is this is 2015. And this is internet. You can learn everything over internet. So just jump in and do your do your game. And yet, some people will not. Some people will say, I have an idea for a game and I'd like to see it made. And they will work on it for a week and then they will, you know, get sidetracked or they'll start playing a video game instead of making one because that's less pressure. That's uh, more uh, escapism and less actual responsibility. Or, or they'll go out on a bunch of dates or they'll pick up the guitar or something. You stick with things. What do you think that is about you that, that has uh, allowed you, and I'm, I'm sure you don't stick with everything, nobody does, but you have stuck with uh, enough things to have a library of games under your belt, which is pretty incredible. Um, it's been a long time since I started a project and dropped it. Uh, it's been maybe, maybe 10 years, every project I start, I finished it. Whoa, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, am I lying? I don't think so. <laughs> I think I'm not lying. I don't think uh, I'm lying either, no. No, I think I'm not lying. Um, mm. uh, and um, I guess I guess uh, the, the more uh, old you get, the more you know yourself and you know uh, how to not start projects, you know you will not able to finish. Um, it's not like uh, waking up one day and saying, I want to do this uh, very long RPG with tons of characters and it will be so deep, you know, and blah, 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 blah. but at the end of the day, I'm the only one making the game. There is something wrong with this idea, so you don't start it. Uh, and um, I, I guess that's just it. It's just to uh, not start project, you know, you won't be able to finish. And um, when um, uh, I come back to your uh, your show with uh, the old boy, um, sure. the old boy uh, designer, mm -hmm. and um, the uh, the uh, sorry, that's water. Okay. <laughs> water. <laughs> I'll get coffee too. We'll both drink. I'll show you another amiibo. This is the amiibo I'm working on right now. Is a squid. Ah, they are. I'll tell you. Those those dirty bastards are super cute. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I don't remember what I, what I was saying. We were but talking it, yeah. about the owl boy uh, yeah. episode with Simon Anderson, and he's yeah, and, on the game and, for seven years. And he's done other things in the meantime. He's got a yeah. The so Ducktales, the uh, Ducktales mockup, the Chip and Dale's mockup, um, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. Um, I, I just can't do this because it will make me too sad to not finish the project. <laughs> it's it's that's that's the truth. I, I just can't throw mockups and and uh, and people people maybe will like it and say, all right. When will be uh, when will it be uh, out? And the answer is never. I got to finish the next Penelope before, so it, it does not make any sense. And I'm trying very hard to not do this kind of stuff. But you can understand how, uh, in Simon's case, from from getting to know him, uh, yeah, the really. Show, he would. It sounded to me like the the stress and the pressure he was putting yeah. on himself with Owlboy was so intense and it's that stress and pressure that allows him to be so meticulous and detail oriented and do this yeah. right artwork that I could never And, really and it's easy it's easy to it's easy for me to say this because I only only worked on Penelope for two years and a half, three years. It's not seven years. Uh, maybe one more year or six months six more months, I will be like exploding and and feel <laughs> a very strong need to draw something else um I, and actually right uh, right now uh, i have a day job uh working in another game company and uh, it feels very good to work on something else huh? so 
yeah, as soon as I have uh, finished the next Penelope, uh, I had to pay the bills again. <laughs> and so I'm working at Pasta Games, the company uh, they made um, uh, Rayman Jagger Run on mobile, and oh, they yeah. made they made a game called uh, Pix the Cat on uh, on PS4. And so, I'm working there. And, and I actually the last Arquito game. Yeah, exactly. It reminded me of Pix the Cat. Yeah, it was a, a, a collaboration between the two companies. Yes, oh, uh, no, no, we're we're friends for a long time now, oh, and awesome. um, and and yes, I can understand because it feels very good to work on something else, but at the same time, I uh, I won't be able to do um, uh, good stuff on another project until I consider the next Penelope very 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 finished, mm. and and there is still a few things I want to. Um, uh, polished uh, thanks to the feedback from uh, on the Steam forums and all. By the way, the Steam forums, I've been told, and I experienced uh, at the earlier era, uh, I've been told it was very difficult to speak with people and they were like brutal. And, and for now, I'm super, super lucky, but so much lovely pals on in uh, on the on the forum. It's like uh, I'm I'm having I'm having a, a safe problem. I'm like oh, oh I'm so sorry I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. I'm just having a safe problem. What? You know and, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, the next Penelope is yeah. the kind of game who is going to attract an audience who truly just wants to have fun playing a video game. They're not there. Yeah, and it's very niche. niche. Yeah, I'm sorry. Good. And uh, no, and it's very niche. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, not necessarily. I think it's the kind of game that has the potential to appeal to a lot of people. They just haven't discovered it yet. But for now, the people who have heard of it and the people who are, are, are so into that genre that they would be attracted to it, narrow down on it and play it, they're not the kind of people that just want to, like, troll on uh, Steam in order to, to make fun of people. Or you know, there's no political agenda even no. close to being involved in the game. So there's no, you're not attracting any of the, the political side of gaming that's developed. Uh, it, you're just attracting people that want a fun arcade. Yeah, as, and uh, there, is, there, is no, there is no religion in it uh, either. In earlier, uh, because of the title of the game and because of the damn and uh, other stuff like this in, uh, in the game, one of the first comments uh, was, I can't believe you're kissing your mom with the same mouse, writing this awful dialogue stuff and these awful characters. And you know, we have people in Iraq fighting for God and and what? You, yeah, yeah, really, really, and um, and it was very, very uh, surprising for us because it was just a, uh, a light and fun game. But yeah. some very few people took it very seriously, and so I was a bit afraid of the Steam forums because of this particular reason. Reason, and yeah. um, so I guess it's cool to play with uh, Greek gods and not that much with uh, the official American ones. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I guess I'm just lucky, but um, uh, yeah, I'm super happy to just uh, talk with people on the Steam forum. And uh, um, it's, it's very pleasant and that's such a, such a surprise, yes. No, oh, that's good. Uh, uh, any thoughts about uh, recent development? Steam allowing players to refund their game as long as they didn't play, I think, over two hours of it. Yeah, it and, and the, ne the next Penelope usually uh, takes four hours to beat if you don't want to do the bonus missions and this kind of stuff, but very skilled players um, uh, can finish the game in less than two hours. Obviously, it doesn't include the bonus mission and the multiplayer part and this kind of stuff, but then they can say, I finished the game in less than two hours. Uh, for now, I don't see any effect. Of it. Mm, right. So I, I guess the multiplayer part uh, make uh, the people to keep the game, to play with their friend, and uh, and maybe it's a bonus mission as well uh, because they're super hard and uh, a bit different from the, the the story mode. So I guess people feel feel like okay, maybe I've done the story mode in two hours, but there is still some stuff to do, and I will play this game with my friends. So for now. No refund problems. Huh. We'll see in the next week, but for now, no issue. Oh, good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah. I, I assume the, the larger it gets, the more likely you will 
have people yeah, I guess. play for a half hour or so and say I, I, I'm no good at this because it is it's not an easy game, which is a good thing, uh, and it's got a nice learning curve to it, but it's uh, it's not a yeah, game. It's challenging. That, it's it's, yeah. it's very challenging, and it's it's mean to it's mean to be this way because I want you to be proud when you're succeeding in in a level, and um, the more. Um, it's not true anymore, but uh, before the Dark Souls era, when I, when I started the game, uh, Dark Souls uh, wasn't very popular, and it w even maybe wasn't out yet. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very tired of all the, the tutorials, the, the, um, the super easy games. And uh, I wanted to make something very challenging from the start. And, uh, and yes, if you're not a very skilled player, you can grab the game, but uh, be sure you will have um, maybe to go uh, on the internet to ask for some advices, which is not a problem because, um, uh, as I said, the, the game structure is a, a bit like Mega Man. You grab a weapon, use it in another, another level, and um, uh, I'm very happy when I see people uh, talking about the game on the internet and um, and uh, giving uh, themselves advices like you have to uh, get the the teleport stuff before the the mines before and and go in this level and uh, I, I'm just reading, looking this thing and. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's that? Was the goal. <laughs> and uh, what did you have in mind? Uh, uh, a way that people would end up playing? Did you like think that it'll be easier to beat this world first and then go to this world? And and have players surprised you at all in the ways they've gone about playing the game? Maybe found things. Uh, people people are surprising me a lot. Um, and they do stuff in the game uh, which I didn't plan. Um, this is the very beginning of people trying to speed run the game. Um, and when I see when I see them doing stuff, I, I don't know if it's a bug or if it can be done without uh, uh, slowing your computer. Or, I don't know how they do that. They beat the game way quicker than me. And uh, and this is pretty cool to watch, and I, I'm, I'm surprised by my game when I watch these kind of videos, and uh, and uh, this is this is super cool. This is a nice feeling to have. Yeah, it sounds fun. Uh, we're almost out of time already, unfortunately. That, that zoomed oh. by for me. Uh, but I can't help but be curious, though. It's been in the back of my head while you've been talking, knowing it sounds like you've liked video games for for some time, for for a lot of your life, falling asleep at yep. Bingo. Uh, cocktail cabinets. It's probably been no short. Is there is there are any games that you've ever thought? I know what I would do with that franchise if I had the opportunity. And if you could, you know, without worrying about money, rule a a, a large enough team. So let's yeah. say let's say someone is uh, is allowing me to grab any license. Yes, I can choose anyone. Um, a Pokey and Rocky. Do you know Pokey and Rocky? Pocky and Rocky. That is yeah. not. Yes, I, I'm not super uh, uh, familiar with it. They actually yeah. made a fake Pocky and Rocky game for the Wii. Uh, it, they some for some reason had to change it at the last minute, so it's not oh. actually called Pocky and Rocky. It's called like Mystic Defenders or something. But it's clearly Pocky and Rocky. You're fighting oh. the uh, umbrellas that have Cyclops eyes on it. It's actually, it actually gives me an Arquito feel a little bit to it. Um, so yeah, I, 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 would, I, I would be I would be very happy to uh, to make a new Pokémon in Rocky, and I don't know. I think it was uh, Natsume. The publisher was Natsume, and uh, I'm not very sure they're super super alive right now. Uh, but um, yeah, I would love to do this, and and um, maybe. Maybe I I don't know, but maybe um, uh, an Astro Go Go game. I don't know if you, yeah. All right, uh, this there is this very uh, niche game called Astro Go Go. It was uh, on Super Nintendo, and it uh, it, it was like the um, uh, alternative Mario Kart uh, on the console. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, just look for Astro Go Go, and it. The ending was terrible, mm -hmm. but the graphics, the music, and all the spirit, it was like uh, racing with uh, Parodius and uh, like YY Racing or Konami Crazy Racers. 
Um, it was this kind of stuff. Yeah, no, forget us for Google. I want to do a new uh, Konami Crazy Racers. This is exactly what I want to do. So um, Konami tried to make new games again and give me some money. I want to do this badly. I uh, second that completely, and it will only help you to get the, the rights to uh, Konami. What's it? I've never even heard of it. Konami, what's it called again? Konami Crazy Racer. Crazy uh, Racer. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the American name, but uh, the, the the true name is YY Racing. And uh, you 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 look for uh, Game Boy Advance YY Racing. And uh, if you don't know the game, it will be mind blowing because it's Mario Kart with um, uh, some Metal Gear character, Pop and Twin B ones, um, Parodius. Uh, all, the, all the classic Konami franchises, uh, Antarctic Pyramid Adventure. Game? I know Pyramid Head yeah, was yeah, in their yeah, second yeah, field yeah. game. He was in yeah. their Konami. He's in there. And the, the, thing, the, the, the game you want to avoid at all costs, and I'm very sorry if someone is watching uh, this show and worked on this version, but the mobile version of this game, because yes, it exists, uh, is the, 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 the shittiest game ever <laughs> made. And uh, again, I'm really sorry if you work on this game. Sometimes you have to do stuff you don't want to, so I Absolutely. understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is really, really bad. And it is as bad as the original game on Game Boy Advance was, uh, uh, was good. And oh. um, yeah, so definitely, if you don't know the game, check, uh, check uh, Konami Crazy Racers on, uh, on Game Boy Advance and uh, Pokey and Rocky on Super Nintendo because uh, this is um, light earth um, fantasy colors Japanese particles yeah things and uh, you want to play this right now so check this out and and furthermore for you to become the powerhouse in the industry that I do hope that you become people should go check wow. out Nervous Breakdown and Big Bang Mini and Hell Yeah and of course the next Penelope. All yeah, this is done. this is the thing uh, behind me. I don't know if oh, you yeah, see well, something. Oh yeah, in the background. But right? yeah, uh, this is the thing you're looking at it passively for one hour and a half now. Yeah. And um, and yes, it's out of steam and. Uh, Someone I don't know told it's pretty good, so maybe you could. <laughs> yes, they should. Gosh darn it. Uh, they can follow you on Twitter. It's not yep. quite your name, but it's close. It's at. Yeah, it's. it's oh, I, <clears throat> I don't know how you will find this. Um, it's Aurel Regard. But uh, yeah, just. Just look uh, at the next Penelope over the internet, and you will uh, have my Twitter account just next to it. It will be much, much simpler because my name is like unpronounceable by Americans. So <laughs> let's just call me Paul and look for the next Penelope. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> As for me, I'm at Tronauts on Twitter. You can follow me there if you want. I don't know. And you can watch the show later on YouTube. Almost all the old episodes are up there. We're, we're missing a couple that we have to try to edit, but nearly all there. Almost 150 episodes. Pretty darn weird. Three years or so we've been doing this show now. Or you can listen to it, which is the preferred method, so I'm told, on Libsyn or iTunes. Look for subhomes on there. You'll find it. And I think that's everything for us, guys. Thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> Ciao.